Okay, today I'm going to look at the idea of innovation and I'm going to base it around the idea of synthesizers and sound effects. But I think this method for initiating innovation is applicable to pretty much any area of um, science and technology or maybe anything else. So the first thing I'm going to do is to think of all the different ways I can create uh, synthesized sounds and sound effects. And I'm going to start with something called a mind map. And so uh, let's take a look at how this goes. If I look at synthesizers, um, one way to divide up synthesizers into two general branches is the idea of an analog uh, synthesizer or uh, a digital synthesizer. And if I look at um, analog synthesizers, I can think of them in a couple different ways. The first is that I might have a hardware analog synthesizer. Or it could be a simulated analog synthesizer and software. And that will come back to actually being falling into the digital category again. And so uh, that's the, the software ones are called analog modeling. but in many cases they give you the similar functionality to a hardware synthesizer. So now I'm going to go back to the hardware synth and take a look at a few things. First of all is um, the idea of a uh, sound source and so um, uh, for that one I'm going to look at a waveform and I'll start off one of the most common is the sine wave and so you can make a sine wave for a waveform. Um, you can also have a little bit more complex, adding some complexity to the waveform we could make a triangle wave. Um, uh, you could also make a saw wave and there's this is even more complicated a little bit because these can either you can either have a saw down or a saw that's sort of ramping up as it goes okay and then you can have uh, a square wave and that has a shape like this, but you can also change the duty cycle of the square wave um, to make it into a more of a pulse waveform. Um, and so you can make this uh, go from pulse to square. Okay, and then um, you may be able to uh, uh, there's some other things you can do with these. You can uh, modulate the square wave. So you can have this one adding more complexity. So we're getting more complex. Um, you can have the waveform modulating in time. And so you could have it going from a narrow pulse and gradually get wider and wider um, oops, until uh, you're actually back to an inverted narrow pulse again. Okay, so this is called uh, pulse width modulation. Alright. Now there's another thing you can do and that is um, trigger a reset in the hardware oscillator. So if you trigger a reset you can cause this to jump back to zero. So as it's ramping up here, you can tell it, okay, jump back to zero and time with some 
other oscillator. So you have two oscillators and one of them is triggering a reset in this oscillator and that's called oscillator uh, synchronization. And that adds more complexity to the sound source. Okay, so those are a bunch of different waveforms. I'm going to look at uh, Oh, you could also, going from something, usually this is done based on something like a sine wave, but you can also uh, do something like um, have the frequency with two oscillators. You could have the frequency of one sine wave modulate the frequency of another sine wave, and that uh, gives you um, something called FM, or frequency modulation. Okay. Now this can be done either in hard as an analog synthesizer at, or as a digital uh, a digital synth. So this can also be done digitally or with analog synthesis. Another thing you can do with these is um, you can sort of multiply the two sine waves to get or the two waveforms together either with a sine wave or some other waveform or maybe multiply a square one times a sine wave. And with these you end up with a okay and so we have a uh, basically times uh, this is signal B and we can take A times B and change the amplitude of A um, to match the uh, the amplitude of, of this B signal and that gives us something called um, amplitude modulation Um, and or really this is uh, ring modulation okay so now if I go back to the uh, focus on the digital domain for a while and just leave the analog behind for just a little bit and let's look at some uh, digital stuff as I said before the uh, frequency modulation it's one of the most popular forms of digital synthesis when it first came out and sometimes you also have something called phase modulation and in this case one oscillator usually they're simple sine wave oscillators one of them modulates another one to give you a more complex a waveform and some of these uh, phase modulation systems had um, several oscillators, six or even more oscillators, and they can all uh, modulate each other. Okay, Another um, type of system that's similar to this uh, that actually uses even more oscillators might be a uh, we could have, and this could be done analog, but it's more often, I think, done digitally. And that's an additive system. And this uses um, many oscillators, uh, usually sine wave oscillators, and uses uh, the idea of Fourier's idea that you can recreate any signal based on summing an infinite number of of oscillators. So this is additive and each one would have a different frequency but they might also have a different phase. Um, usually they're all sine waves though and so these all add together to give you some complex uh, waveform. When you put all, combine all these signals together it makes for a complex waveform. So that's called additive synthesis and then another variation on that, making it even more complex and giving you actually more flexibility is something called, um, I guess that could come off of here maybe, and that's called um, granular synthesis.
and it turns out granular synthesis is a very uh, general category of synthesis And that also not only takes many uh, waveforms and adds them of different frequencies to add them together, um, but also applies an envelope to each one. So there's some sort of uh, envelope going on with each of these. And uh, the main idea is that you'll end up with a little pulse of sound, and you can ch uh, have these occur randomly or have them uh, um, align them and so you they're directly overlapping but it's based on these little pulses of simple sounds and this is a very general technique so you could use this to um, like um, each of these could be a sample a waveform maybe a, a person different people laughing okay and so then when you combine all of those sample waveforms together you get a complex uh, sound of, of a whole room of people laughing, uh, modulating each one, varying the, the pitch or the, the sound of each one, or using completely different samples. Um, so this is a very generalized, uh, powerful synthesis method. And when we look at it in the next section, we'll see that uh, you can do a lot with that type of synthesis. Okay, so let's take, in the next section, I'm going to take a look at uh, sound effects, okay? So we'll get into that next.